Well, hey folks, Real Lost Super Winter Rentals is 10 more wrestlers that won me over, much like my previous list. I'm going to talk about some talents that, <clears throat> for one reason or another, turn my opinion of them around. Like, I mean, and a lot of these actually aren't ones that I had a negative opinion on. A lot of them were like, okay, I don't know if necessarily this is going to work. Maybe I will be proven wrong. And thankfully I was. Now, in the case of a couple of these entrants, a lot of them I were fans, I was fans of initially, and still am, but seeing them live actually <clears throat> helped open my eyes up to just how good they actually are. So, yeah, a bit of a twist on like how I did the original list, but hey, wrestling fan, I've been proven wrong before. I was happy to be proven wrong when it came to the previous uh, list of talents, and especially with this list of talents. And yes, I'm going to put over uh, some women on this, so be prepared for that. It's not all women, but it, it's a mixture. So let's start off, however, with Shayna Baszler. And yes, pr promos aside, <clears throat> her promos are decent. De decent. Her what really t what really sells her is her in ring work, and I will say this: her in ring work has improved dramatically. I was proven wrong about her as I saw her as just some kind of boring, flat, one dimensional character. She is legit in the ring. Has had better matches as the year has gone on. Am I her biggest fan? No. But I will say this, she has certainly impressed me and has certainly had some better performances than I initially thought she could have. <clears throat> and really, that's all That's all it could be asked for. She had a decent NXT women's title run. I'm not going to call it one of the best. It was better than Ember, Ember Moon's. Not Nothing against Ember Moon, but they didn't really use her all that well either. But Shayna did, you know, as, as the title reign went along, especially to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 where Kyrie Sane beat her, that's where the title really started to mean something. And now Shayna's in the midst of her second title run that may or may not last beyond War Games. I'm taping this just before War Games, so if it ends, I <coughs> take over War Games. Apologies for not having the clairvoyance to see into the future. But Shayna Baszler has impressed me with her in-ring work and has, has won me over in the sense where it's like, okay, hey, you know, I can see certainly why people sung her praises. So that that right there. I, I concede defeat. I, I concede defeat on this. Um, I was proven wrong, and I'm happy to have been proven wrong. Now we go to number nine, Bianca Belair. Because initially, like in the Mae Young Classic, I saw the talent there. Because I could see for somebody so young, and somebody who <clears throat> hadn't been in wrestling all that damn long, she got it. She really was good in the ring, and is still good in the ring. She's improving dramatically every time they bring her on TV. What didn't sell me was the hair whip thing. I still, I, I, I don't quite get the hair whip thing. I mean, it is marketable and stuff like that, but... With her, the persona and the ability and the ring and the strength, you look at, you look at her and you're like, holy shit, she can just pick people up like, you know, <clears throat> like they're nothing. And she's not, I mean, she's in shape and she obviously, you know, has a good physique, but you wouldn't think that she could pick people up just like that. And my God, she just defies all, defies all stereotypes or any <clears throat> perceptions of her. And she is really damn good. Like, I was impressed with her in the initial tournament. She has impressed me dramatically more since that has gone on. And Bianca Belair is going to be a star. Like, I even did, uh, you know, stars that will shine for the next decade in WWE. Bianca Belair was one of those. And she is really damn good. It took a bit for her to win me over. And I'm happy she did because that woman is fantastic. Now we go to number eight, Hangman Page. Hangman Page, Adam Page in <coughs> Ring of Honor New Japan. I saw him as a good hand in the ring. I saw him as somebody that, okay, I can see why some people are trying to, you know, why some people sing his praises, but how good is he really? Then he had a match with Jay White as Strong Style Evolve for the U.S. title. And don't worry, it's not the only time you're going to mention, or you're going to hear Jay White mentioned on this list. Spoiler alert. Hangman Page shined to me. He shined that night. Then he shined as things went on. He shined, <clears throat> especially in the G1. He, even though he didn't win the thing, obviously, I think he only won a couple, few matches, he really impressed me because he brought it every single night. That was a groundbreaking series of performances in that tournament. And the G1 can do that, even in defeat, can make a lot of stars matter <clears throat> and make some new stars and everything. And that's what he is. He is a big star. He is a big, big goddamn star. He is a big star for years to come. He really is damn good. And Hangman Page, I really hope that um, New Japan can lock him down. I think he turned down a Ring of Honor contract, but wherever he goes, that guy screams star. He's only he's only 27. He's got years ahead. 
<clears throat> if you know people to get it early and just stick with it my god it's just great to watch hangman page he has evolved so damn much this year and was really impressed me that especially in a match in the g1 with minoru suzuki that was really good stuff and then when he faced uh, joey janela at all in he Heyman Page was really fantastic. I I almost ranked him a bit higher here, but I because he impressed me like back in March with that match with Jay White, as I talked about. <clears throat> he just is really, really damn, damn good. And now we get to number seven, and this one may surprise people, Liv Morgan. I recognize Liv Morgan still has a long way to go as far as being a really good threat as far as a single star. But initially, I called her an Alexa Bliss knockoff and said she wasn't that good, and she was just, eh, she was just a spunky kid, <clears throat> you know, carbon copy. And I'm not even saying her, but just the persona they gave her, this carbon copy of the same, you know, tired, you know, pretty, perky blonde that they, that they tend to push. And as time has gone on, especially this year, especially with the Riot Squad, as the Riot Squad has gotten more TV time, I started to see... The improvement with Liv Morgan. Even in the past six months, she has she has improved a lot in my eyes. Because I can see that she's learning. What really did impress me was how she bounced back from that concussion so soon. <clears throat> that spot with Rebella, and then I ranted about that uh, you know, earlier um, in September. I think it was, yeah, it was earlier in September. She is good. Liv Morgan is very good. Can get a whole lot better. I still think Sarah is just a bit above her as far as like ranking the Riot Squad. Of course, Ruby Riot, um, <clears throat> her years of indie experience speak for themselves. She, it, but Liv is really, really good. And I can see the star, you know, the, the star is starting to shine a little brighter there. I think, I, I don't know if Liv's ever going to be like a main, main star of the company, but I think she could certainly be better than I initially thought she would be. And I'm very glad that I was proven wrong about her. She cares about wrestling. She cares about getting better. And you can tell that she loves it. And kudos to her for trying to get back into the ring after that concussion spot. Um, I just, it does show how she, you know, <clears throat> really strong, really strong willed and everything. And that impressed me. Now, I wish it didn't have to come to that for her to impress people, but even before that, Liv was starting to impress me, so I'm glad that I was able to, uh, you know, uh, that was able to open my eyes, turn my opinion around on her, and I can't wait to see what 2019 brings her. If they bring if they bring women's tag team titles in there, give them to the Riot Squad and have them do the Freebird rule thing. Why not? Liv, Liv Sarah, and Ruby should taste some gold of some, of some capacity in 2019. <laughs> and then we go to number six, Taya Valkyrie, who is... Uh, John Morrison, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, uh, his, his wife. I got to meet John Morrison and uh, Taya <clears throat> both at a uh, at a Defy Wrestling show. And Taya impressed me. Now, Taya impressed me initially when I saw her in Lucha Underground. And I know she had worked with Impact earlier in the year. It took a while for me to like get really what her persona was and how good she could be in the ring. Because the first scene, I'm like, okay, hmm. It wasn't that she was bad, but I just wasn't sure because I hadn't seen that much of her. As time went on, I got more and more impressed with her. <clears throat> and then seeing her wrestle live, she is really, really good. She's strong, she is quick, and she can gain some really good sympathy as a baby face. She can get the crowd fired up and everything. I I believe she faced Nicole Matthews. Um, before that whole thing unfortunately happened with Nicole Matthews and not being able to enter the U.S., which is bullshit, by the way, but whatever. Um, best of luck to Nicole, as she is a fantastic wrestler as well, but was able to see her twice live. Taya impressed me mostly, uh, most that night. I could definitely see, I'm like, okay, now I see why, pe why people are big fans of her. I was a fan of her before, <clears throat> but that helped um, change, but you know, change any per early perception I may have had of her. She is, which wasn't a bad, which wasn't a bad uh, early perception. I just didn't know anything about her, and seeing her live really did change, uh, change my, change my opinion. And I got to meet her, got to get an autograph from her. Really, really nice, really down to earth, and really can't wait to see what her and uh, John Morrison do. Honestly, both are dynamite performers, but Taya. Really did impress me before then, but especially once I saw her at that indie show. Gotta admit, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a 
true fan now, even though I was a fan of her before, she impressed me here. So, now we go to number five, Buddy Murphy. Because if you would have told me that, but that you know Murphy of Blake and of you know of Wesley Blake and you know Murphy, you know Blake and Murphy, that Alexa Bliss was hey, Alexa Bliss, you know. Uh, was the manager of that team that was actually pretty good Yes, NXT tag champions, believe it or not. That was during a weird time of NXT TV. Um, <clears throat> if you would have told me that Buddy Murphy would be one of the hottest things on 205 Live, one of the hottest things that WWE has in 2018, I would have laughed in your face. Not that Buddy Murphy wasn't talented, but I'm like, there's no way. I hadn't seen him on TV for a number of months or like a really long time. And my God, the guy is shredded. The guy is super agile, super quick, super strong. The guy is a complete package. Got better on promos. The story they told of him finally being Cedric Alexander was really, really good. Buddy Murphy <coughs> opened my eyes to just how, yeah, he really is a great single star and not just a good tag team wrestler. Him and Wesley Blake, which they really haven't known what to do with Wesley Blake for a while. I mean, until recently. But Murphy impressive and super super athletic really interested to see what he does especially in 2019 that guy is fantastic and i <clears throat> can't believe that i initially thought that he wouldn't do all that well maybe it's because i hadn't seen all that much of him in a couple of years but anyway then we get to number four yoshi hashi from new japan um that you know trip and getting his head busted open aside when he was supposed to do that run in and help uh you know, and stop Jay White, and hopefully Yoshihashi's okay. We haven't seen him for a couple months. Um, Yoshihashi is really good. You know, he's a headhunter. He's, you know, a member of Chaos. He is somebody that's probably going to be mid card for life in New Japan, but I think he gets too much of a bad rap because he is good in the ring. He had a good match with Michael Elgin. <clears throat> um, that's hard to do because Elgin... Yeah, Elgin's Elgin. He's a fucking creep and an idiot. Um, maybe really strong and everything, but he's a fucking creep. Anyway, back to Yoshihashi. He is somebody that I really was impressed with. And having heard of him and having seen a little, having seen not live, but enough of New Japan before now, I can see why people sung Yoshihashi's praises. And it took a bit. But I was like, yeah, you know, he may, maybe he will never be more than a tag team champion. Um, <clears throat> but the guy is very, very good. And I think it's too much of a bad rap, honestly. I really don't think he deserves the bad rap that he's been given. Which is weird, because he seems like a nice guy, and he's a good hand in the ring. Number three, speaking of New Japan, Jay White. And why Jay White? Well, because the guy really has evolved so much. I mean, from Wrestle Kingdom 12 when he faced Tanahashi in a decent but not great match for the Intercontinental title, the IWGP Intercontinental title. Um, <clears throat> Jay White won the U.S. title from Kenny Omega a few weeks later at uh, New Begin in Sapporo. Went on about a five and a half month run, something like that, and really did impress me in that match with Hangman Page I mentioned earlier. His, um, it's just great work, you know, work he did in the G1, the match he had with um, uh, Juice Robinson at the G1 special where he lost the U.S. title. Jay White having a great run in the G1, as I said, recently aligning with Gato and aligning with Bullet Club and <clears throat> becoming this full-on massive dick, that little feud he had with uh, Tanahashi. Now he's going to face Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. Jay White is a big star. Now, it, it took me a bit to come, uh, to come around on him. Because I was like, the personality's not quite there. And yeah, there's still something missing that will no doubt take years of experience to really bring out of him. But the guy really embraces being a goddamn heel, and he really is good. He really is good, and I'm going to have a ton of fun watching what he does in his career from <clears throat> 2019 on. Because that match with Okada is, I don't want to say make or break, because Jay White's still young. And so is Okada, don't get me wrong. Okada, it sounds like Okada's got one foot in the grave. But Jay White is somebody they could really build around if they keep him locked down. He is goddamn good. Um, <clears throat> number two, EC3. Because I recognized how talented he was, even as Derek Bateman. And I recognized that he had a good look. You know, poofy pineapple hair aside. And when he, But when he went to Impact, I was like, EC3... He's got a great look. I don't think this character is going to work. And I'm really happy to report I was proven wrong. 
like five years later, just over five years at years after the um, after that after that you know character debuted. My God, the guy is just so fucking good. How fucking good, you know, are you? Oh, I have a producer friend here. Give me a second, folks. I had to take him to the vet today. Don't worry, he's okay. Hi. Oh, it's okay. Anyway, so back to EC3. EC3 over, <coughs> pretty much from about 2015, but especially 2016, really started to impress me. His world title runs, his face turn, him coming into NXT. That guy is really goddamn good. He really is goddamn good. And just looking at him and looking at how much he's improved and how much he's been able to be a star in NXT, even though I could argue that maybe he should be using him a little better, maybe he'll become a heel at some point, he really is fucking good. EC3 is fucking tremendous. And now <clears throat> we're going to move on to number one. Just two women. Now, Priscilla Kelly, who I was impressed with in the Mae Young Classic, but only got to see a flash of how good she was, and I go, I want to see more. I've heard about her. I want to see more. And I got to see her live <coughs> at a Without a Cause um, show. That's an indie promotion. It just started in Everett, Washington, next city over from me. As I point south, of course, I would have to tell you a south, because you don't know which direction I'm facing. Um, seeing her live was really impressive. One... She is really goddamn good in the ring. Really impressive. I see why people spoke so highly of her and why she was seen as such a big star in wrestling. And for her age, I think she's, what, 21, 22? She's got her whole freaking life ahead of her, and she's that experienced and that good already. How good is she going to be <clears throat> a few years from now? My God, she's that good and that well-spoken and super intelligent. I mean, and she clearly loves wrestling. I mean, it's not its not that I assumed anything otherwise, you know, of what I said, but it's like so well-spoken, so... She is very charismatic and play face or heel easily. And, yeah, I got to meet her. And really nice and down to earth. And I'm a big... I, I, was, I was a fan of her. I was really excited to meet her. In fact, her being at the show is pretty much <clears throat> one of the reasons I wanted to go there. Getting to meet her was really, really nice and a really eye-opening experience to seeing just how hard women work on the indies. Yes, Defy had done that a couple times, but still, she was um, really, really impressive. And then I'm going to get to the final one. So Priscilla Kelly, big fan of her and really excited to see what she does in her career. And then here we go. Thunder Rosa, who um, <clears throat> plays Cobra Moon on Lucha Underground. I was impressed with her initially, even if I didn't quite understand the background of the character. But I recognized the performer was really talented. And once I saw how she was outside of Lucha Underground, I'm like, she really is a damn good performer. And getting to meet her was an eye-opening experience where, holy crap, she really is damn good. And it's great to see these women working so damn hard and hopefully getting to show that women's wrestling, even <coughs> in smaller promotions, is so fantastic, you know, and that these women really do work hard and the women really do deserve some damn good respect. And yeah, I'm putting the women over here at the end of this. Thunder Rosa, very, very sweet, very down to earth and a great performer. Both her and Priscilla Kelly put on the best match of the show easily. And that's nothing against any of the men that competed, but the women went out there and worked super hard and did very, very well. And yeah, <clears throat> I was impressed initially with Priscilla Kelly and uh, Thunder Rosa before I got to meet them. And getting to meet them just really opened up my eyes to, yeah, that's just how, that they really are that good, that down to earth, that um, that great in the ring, and just all around very, very good, you know, good women, and really good spokeswomen for how women's wrestling is in, uh, how women's wrestling is in general, like not just on the indies, but like, you know, <clears throat> Thunder Rosa, big star on cable TV, Priscilla Kelly has earned a really good big name for herself. They both are really, really damn good. And that's why I got them both at number one. So, um, anyway, that's what I have to say. What do you have to say? Again, who are some uh, people that impress you, men or women, that impressed you and changed your perception of them, you know, whether it's in WWE or any company? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. It's been Real Lossy with John Rithlin, and I will see you soon.